Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Testimony Tuesday. My name is Michaela, and I am a senior studying accounting. And I have been involved with SCF since my freshman year, and that has been through life groups and attending as many nights of worship as I can make it to. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my testimony during this time of Corona, as well as what God has been teaching me um, throughout this time, as well as kind of throughout college. So we're going to start at my freshman year. And in this year, I actually came in as an actual science major, and I was not completely satisfied. Um, I wasn't sure if it was where God had me. I wasn't positive if that was the career I saw myself doing outside um, of college. So I began to really seek God and seek counsel in my parents um, about potentially switching to accounting. And really, I'd spent most of my time not really talking to a lot of people, but praying about it um, and asking God what he wanted my future to hold and how I could use these four years to prepare for that. And I actually um, was randomly having a conversation with a friend I made from my life group my freshman year. And I brought up the fact that I was looking at switching majors, um, which is something I wasn't talking about to really anyone. Um, but it was completely God who prompted me to do that because after I shared that I really wanted to job shadow, I just didn't know where. She was like, my aunt works at a CPA firm in downtown. You can job shadow there. Um, so God really set that up for me. Um, and I actually went and I job shadowed and ended up being recruited to go um, do a leadership program with them. Um, just to kind of learn more about the company and the career and like to learn about a career in accounting. Um, and again, very much so God, because I was a freshman, not really knowing much um, that kind of walked me through all of that. And I was planning my ways. Um, I was planning my path when I was getting to college. I had that major. I was going to go in all, all in. I was going to go for it. And God kind of started to correct me because um, as I said, I did end up switching to accounting. And as I can kind of continue on the story, you'll see that it's really something that I'm passionate about and I love so much. Um, but then he, he got me on the right path with what major um, and what I should be doing in my future. But he continued to walk with me um, through the rest of that path. Because if you fast forward a year towards the end of my sophomore year, I really started looking at where's that internship opportunity? Um, where's that going to be? What company? Um, what area within the field? And within that, I was actually having a conversation with one of my advisors, and we were talking about internships for credit. And I was saying, I was planning that in spring of 2020, that would be the best semester that I could do an internship. And the accounting industry works pretty far out in advance. So to be going into an internship in spring of 2020, you're starting to look for that in the spring of 2019. You're starting to look for that in the summer. And a lot of times those positions are filled um, very quickly, at minimum about a year out. So this advisor pretty much flat out told me, you will not intern in spring of 2020, not in a CPA firm. Um, and that didn't sit well with me. I walked out of that and I'm like, God, I don't think that was you. Um, I, d I don't think you were telling me that I wasn't going to be interning in spring of 2020. So since this person was an authority over in authority over me as my advisor, I petitioned God and I said, God, I don't think this is you. So I'm not going to agree with those words spoken over me. And if he wants me to have an internship, if you want me to have an internship, then I'm trusting you to work it out because I don't know what company, I don't know where, um, I didn't know any of the details. And surely he kept working. And through an assignment in one of my classes, I ended up meeting back up with that um, friend's aunt, who's the manager at a CPA firm. 
And out of that, I ended up having an internship for spring of 2020. So again, I was semi planning my path here, um, kind of knowing that this needs to happen, not knowing a lot of details, but then giving God the control to direct those steps for that exact company and at that exact timing, because it's really just amazing watching him work. Um, so again, flash forward another year and we're close to where we are now um, and it's spring of 2020, um, which I'm sure is what none of us expected would turn out to be and definitely not what I thought it would be when I started my internship. Because as you all know, about halfway through, um, COVID became very widespread um, across the globe. And I was very, very blessed and fortunate that I was able to continue my internship remotely. Um, but on top of that, also came a firm-wide hiring freeze. So essentially, until a lot of, till the economy was able to kind of settle back out, um, this company decided that they were not going to be hiring anyone. And the general expectations um, is after you intern, they are going to offer you a job. And if they don't offer you a job, they're not planning on hiring you. Um, so this is definitely transitioning out of that normal plan, that normal path, the path that I was expecting myself um, to take. And it was quite disappointing. Um, and I really started to be attacked um, in my thoughts from the enemy. I started thinking that, you know what, you've done like a pretty mediocre job um, here at this internship. Um, you know, they weren't gonna hire you anyway. Even if there wasn't a hiring freeze, they weren't gonna hire you. And guess what? This hiring freeze is gonna last so long that you're gonna graduate and there's still not gonna be a position for you. And you don't have any other prospects. You haven't looked at any other CPA firms. And it was just this constant barrage. And I would take every thought captive and pull out my Bible and they would go away, but they would always come back. And I really, really have fallen in love with this company. Um, and I pretty quickly realized like, this is where I wanna be. This is where I wanna be. And I kept telling God this, I'm like, but this is where I wanna be God. Um, so finally it kind of hit me one day and it was like, this is where I wanna be, but I haven't asked you where you want me to be. Um, I had been submitting to him with what major with what internship, but in the internship, I was leaning on what Michaela can do and not so much what God can do and what he can do through me. Um, so I finally came to the point where I'm like, okay, God, um, whatever you want, this is what I want. But if you don't want me to work at this company, if this is not where you've been pointing me to, then I'm going to trust you and I'm going to submit to your will for my life. And you got all these things for me. You got me into the door of this company. You got this internship for me. So you can get me into another company if this is not where you want me to have, where you want me to be. And after that, I wasn't having those thought attacks from the enemy. Um, I was sad that the internship was ending, but it was a very different emotion. It wasn't fearful, um, which is what I was experiencing before. Um, and then within that, again, God is amazing um, because he didn't shut that door for me. And the company was actually had in place a way to make a few exceptions to that hiring freeze. So in my last week of that internship, um, one of the managers, actually the same manager that I've been in contact with since the beginning, um, she called me to let me know that they did want to hire me and they didn't want to wait, um, which is just a huge burden, especially in this time lifted off of knowing that I am going to have a starting position in a company that I really love and a company that I really believe God has set me at um, in a city that God has set me in. Um, 
and he's just amazing. Um, it really is because through all these things, even though I was planning my path, God was truly directing those steps um, as whenever I would go and submit to his will. And that's really the major thing that I want to get across to you all. Um, and when Andrew first approached me about this, about um, talking to you all about my testimony, I was kind of like, okay, God, like, I know you did this really cool thing in my life um, and you've taught me a lot through it. I'm like, but what does this really have to do um, for everyone else? Um, and the thing he prompted to me was actually Acts 10. So I'm going to read just a couple of verses. Um, so Acts 10, verse 34, this is from the New King James Version. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and, and works right, Okay, start at 35 again, sorry. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works in righteousness is accepted by him. So really what God was saying here was that God shows, he shows no partiality. So something that he's done for me, he can also do for you. When you go and you submit to him, whether that's with future careers or within school or within relationships or whatever area of your life, he doesn't show partiality. Um, so that's something that I really want you all to take away from this um, about how good God is, even in these times of uncertainty, that he shows no partiality. Um, so, I am going to read one more scripture verse. I know technically it was um, supposed to do one, but um, God is just so good and his word is so amazing that it's hard just to do one thing. So I want to leave you all um, from talking to my testimony about this, um, something about trusting in God. So in Proverbs 3, 3, um, I'll read through 7. So 3 through 7. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. God's just so amazing. Um, so before I leave you all to continue on with your Tuesday evening, I want to pray a quick blessing over you all. Um, all right, so dear Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to have this time and this space to share my testimony and pray with the members of SCF. And I thank you, Lord, that you are not partial, that what you do for one person that you can do for any other child of God. And I thank you, Lord, that even though we are making plans, even in this uncertain time, as we make our plans, we're trusting you, Lord, to direct our paths. I thank you, Lord, that we are trusting and submitting to you to make our plans to make, to make those steps for us. I thank you, Lord, that any doors that you have, that you want to be shut, that you're going to shut those doors. And that any doors that you want to be open for us, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for not only keeping them open, but for giving us the boldness and the peace to walk through them. And I thank you, Lord, that as we follow those steps that you have laid out for us, that we have contentness. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for helping us to be content in the plans that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and I hope this was a blessing.